welcome back to It's an Inside Job podcast. I'm your host, Jason Lim. Now, this podcast is dedicated to helping you to help yourself and others to become more mentally and emotionally resilient so you can be better at bouncing back from life's inevitable setbacks. Now, on It's an Inside Job, we decode the science and stories of resilience into practical advice, skills, and strategies that you can use to impact your life and those around you. Now, with that said, let's slip into the stream. Well, welcome back, folks. Welcome back to It's an Inside Job. I'm your host, Jason Lim. I appreciate you showing up for another week and allowing me to be part of that week. Well, I have a very special episode this week. She's returning guest, and she's been on two other episodes, one in season one and season three. She's also a close friend and a business partner. But today, I am not introducing her as a consultant or that business partner. I'm introducing her as an author. So today, I am both excited and honored to introduce and to reintroduce Agnes Chaharty. As of January 25th, 2024, just to put a stamp on this in case for any future listeners... Agnes will be launching her first and her exceptional book, Performance Advantage, 12 Successful Principles Every Senior Leader Needs to Know, But Executive Courses Don't Teach. This episode marks the first exclusive interview exploring the rich concepts within the Performance Advantage. In this episode, Agnes will bring us an inspirational story, a testament to resilience and success forged from her extensive global experience in leadership. Her journey is not just about professional achievements, but also about personal triumphs, making her insights all that more relatable and powerful. We are going to dive into the behind the scene insights on what it takes to be published author and the challenges and the victories that come along with this journey. Agnes will share her invaluable tips on resilience, the critical process of unlearning and the bravery required to carve your path in today's dynamic world. So this episode is a must listen for anyone who aspires to elevate their leadership skills and personal growth. So without further ado, folks, let's slip into the stream and meet author Agnes Chaharty. Well, welcome back to the show, Agnes. Thank you very much and very warm welcome to everyone. Today, you're not showing up as a consultant nor as a business partner. You are showing up as an author. As of January 25th, you will be officially launching your book. Maybe you can share us the title and let's explore today. The title is The Performance Advantage, and and many would say, what does that mean? And anybody who has perhaps written a book or or has a family member or knows somebody's written a book, the title is probably the last thing, last thing you actually do, and it's not that simple. So what it means is it's performance um, advantage, so gaining advantage through performance. And I will probably explain a little bit about that as we continue this interview. But just to give a little insight, the book had two other titles as we were as as I was writing it and and I can I'm very happy to share because we're here to learn and nobody is perfect and it's a journey so the first title was um, leadership in a circles because mm-hmm. I love I run leadership in a circles and I think leadership is not a long journey but it's a journey through others with others so which mm-hmm. is also in this book but the title isn't that then it mm-hmm. was the next level now, nah, because level. taking mm. yourself to the next, le- to your next, I should have been your next level. But then I realized that all of it is correct and all of it is in here. But actually what the essence is, the key to all is, is how do you create this advantage through performance and understanding what performance is? So it is the performance advantage. Maybe we can begin. I think everyone understands performance, but perhaps from the concept or the context of the book, can you operationally define as to the extent you would like, what do you mean by performance? So I see performance 
as a process. Now we consistently as a process when you're consistently performing at your best. So it's focusing on continuous improvement, perhaps personal growth as well. So it's really this this focus on the process. And I think it's important to also contrast here with achievement. Because, of course, achievement refers to a specific goal or perhaps a milestone uh, you reach along the way of this performance journey. So achievements are, I see them as important markers of success. And it's not about one is better than the other, but there is a distinct difference. And it's your commitment to high performance or performance, actually, that drives your excellence and this sort of sustainable success. I often call it as dancing with excellence, if that's perhaps a, a better way to express it. So to to simplify what I hear, just to make sure I understand. So the achievement's the goal, it's crossing the line, but the performance is the actual run to get across that line or the journey or the trip or the sojourn. And a, a high performance individual although he or she is focused on getting across the line, achieving what they are set out to achieve with themselves or as a team, the major focus is on the effort and the action to get there on the process. Is that what I understand you're saying? Absolutely. And it's all about at this point, you know, when we're talking about high performers or successful individuals, how do you improve yourself? How do you, if if I use your analogy, how do I get across that line faster? Mm-hmm. What do I do? And without dissecting the process, without looking at every element really and, and looking at marginal gains or smaller shifts at this point, there's not some ma- major breakthrough very often at this level. So I think it's where the focus goes. And I often say where focus goes, energy flows. And and really is what is it? What is the tiny thing, tiny shift that creates the biggest impact? And if coming back to your analogy, biggest impact so that I can cross that line perhaps earlier. And you will cross that line. So it's don't think that, you know, we don't, uh, we ignore achievement here. Actually, through focusing on your performance, you're gonna and likely to achieve much better and higher results. You know, it's interesting because I, I work with a number of professionals and some of them are very dedicated to their sports. Some of them are professional mm-hmm. in professional sports. Some of them do it as a, as a hobby. And when we sometimes talk about their challenges, we we've, I find that when they're talking about the corporate challenges or their organizational professional challenges, they're constantly focused on performance, performance, performance. But sometimes we pull an analogy or a certain aspect from their life when they're training. Uh, whatever that sport may be. And that's always broken down into generally three things. It's performance, it's practice, and it's pause or resting and such. How, how, how important is, like performance, a lot of people think about performance is when they're on, they just execute on habits. They execute on what they know to get the best results. But practice, that's where we can enhance the 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 minutiae, the little skills that help us with our performance. How does that kind of, does that work into your philosophy of performance? And maybe you could expand on that. And absolutely does. But I also like to say that, you know, when I talk about high performance Mm -hmm. or performance, and they're not synonymous, but just for uh, simplicity for today, I'm not talking about everybody performing at the same level. Mm -hmm. And and absolutely not. That's nonsense. I mean, no? uh, but performing at our best, reaching our best potential possible. So that's also important to understand. And what does it entail? How does how do I get to my best? Is very very different. Of course, there is a lot of science, a lot of research, a lot of experience comes into, and we know much more than we did perhaps did perhaps before. But I think the question I'm I'm always asking: What do you do? when people are already successful? What do you do when when they're already doing well using a common terminology? Mm-hmm. How do you then, surely you would also like to grow and develop, what's then? And I think that is the, those subtle differences. That is where your performance advantage is critical. So identifying those subtle things, and that may be rest now. So it's, it's, it's again... It's not performance, I don't mean constantly doing, Mm. 
that is not that is not what I mean by performance. Now, how do you actually perform at your best? That may be for a leader, for example. It's not about just doing, doing, leading, succeeding, getting the next mm. job. It's about how you look after yourself. What about self-leadership? I, I talk very often, not just in the book, but everywhere. Because always say, without you, there is no leadership. So um, if you don't look after yourself. So I think it's it's important to say that this is the difference between achievement and performance and the process focus versus, oh, what have I done? How fast can I run once? Mm. Can you repeat it consistently? Can you deliver that consistently and consistently in a way that is sustainable and it doesn't damage your health? You don't have burnout. So it's mm. it's now that's what I mean. And that's where I think it's important to tackle this this challenge. This is an exciting challenge, mm. but it's a challenge, particularly for high performers, because they often look at are you doing well? So mm. Surely, you know, not everything, but you surely, you know, are not you doing well, but you nobody is doing well forever. It's a competitive world out there in any, whether it's sport, whether it's leadership, whether it's life now, or just look at, I know this is not the book about, but just look at parenting. I always say I'm a mom of a 16 year old. I always say, mm. Max, you know, this this is an experiment. I'm learning on the, on the job. And by the time I learned um, you know, the context has shifted. So it's it's very much what is my best performance now at that particular time. So it's not something static I look at also in a business context. No, I think that's very important because, you know, a lot of people who have a lot of experience can completely relate because just over the years of experience and knowledge, this resonates with them. And then you have young leaders coming up through the game and there's sometimes that mindset or that fallacy where people think performance is I have to constantly give 100% when I'm on. You know, sometimes I think as your book is broken down into 12 chapters and each of those chapters addresses different issues of performance. And one of those chapters is on self-awareness. And I think that is such a, a relevant thing. It's to understand that sometimes you'll come into the game, you'll come into work or the office or whatever you do. And you'll understand that, you know, today I'm feeling like a little physically drained and that maybe performance that day is 70% and maybe 70% is good enough. And I think it's very important what you're saying is that sometimes we need to, we need to self-regulate and uh, to understand, to become self-aware of how we need to shift gears and maybe redefine what performance is that particular day, if not that particular week. I was wondering, what do you think about that? Well, absolutely. So I don't see performance as, as perfection. Mm. So that's why I said dancing with excellence. And you know what? Coming that I often, I was somebody say, said to me who reviewed the book and say, and what kind of dance would it be, Agnes? I said, well, often it's an Argentine tango. Um, which is, I think, slightly complex and the legs get, get can get tangled very quickly. And sometimes it's not so. So I think in my world and the high performance world that the people you work with, it often is that. But but I certainly think to you're looking at a longer term here. Mm -hmm. So you're not looking at an achievement. No? You're not looking at today. Have I achieved? Today is a nice. You don't take one data point. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, if this day happens over a period of time, we need to look at where does that come from. But it's not about one data point and, and taking a reaction on that. And, and you know, I have experienced that and I'm very, very open about it. And I think it's important also that experienced leaders like ourselves also open and don't perfectionize the journey because it's far from perfect. And I had my own, own challenge just simply Write, writing the book. So I use the same same techniques myself. And yes, not every day was a perfect day, a perfect data point. Mm. But overall, you know, looking at the performance, that's why looking at the achievement is really, really a sort of not an efficient way on a long term. Now, it's an indicator. Yes, you can note, you can acknowledge that today 
wasn't my bad day, what was my best day mm. rather than a bad day. But but to jump on conclusion for that, that, oh, tomorrow is going to be, or what was it yesterday, that's another journey. So take that data point, observe, and, and you will see if you are reading or will read the book or listen to it because it's also an audible, it's full of observations. And I didn't use that word randomly because I couldn't come up with another one because mm. I think observation is a really important aspect of what we are talking about this this performance and self-awareness as well so if I could just shear, shift gears you know I'm speaking to you as an author today and one of the questions I always like to ask authors is you know what motivated them to write the book so I pose the same question to you what motivated you to write this book well, fascinating, fascinating now to look back because the conversation I started with the publisher, and I think uh, she also remembers, I said, this is not an, I, I very strongly stated through Agnes style, said, this is not an ego journey. Mm. I don't need the book for the book. And and I'm sure she was thinking, well, I'm curious, but, you know, then then why why talk to a publisher? And I said, my my mission's always been to share, to inspire, and make people think differently. Mm. And and you know, to be brutally honest, as as I've been around, you've been around for um, for a little while, should we say? Uh, and the more successful you become, sometimes the less accessible you are. And if you really, if I'm on a mission truly to share, to inspire, I really need to have had to unlearn and look at myself and saying, what am I doing for this now? Or am I just stating this to the in my speeches, in my trainings, in my corporate trainings and coaching? But how do I truly share to inspire? Do I really fulfill that need right now? Perhaps 10 years ago, it was enough what I did. And, and how do I make all this accessible now for all those who perhaps don't have the opportunity to work at an organization mm-hmm. that bring me in or 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 listen to things so so it wasn't an ego journey it was a motivation to fulfill that mission and i did need to have a bit of a conversation with self to to take that journey that you know i don't want a book i don't need a book i want to share to inspire and and the book is the way to continue at this point of my life and then i and i think that's the all honesty, and I'm very grateful that I had a publisher who understood that. I, I just like to kind of backtrack. You you had a curious term by in the process of writing this book, you had to unlearn. I was wondering if you can unpack that and kind of what did yes. you have oh, to absolutely. unlearn? I would say lots, but definitely, I think I had to unlearn that people write books for different reasons and I had completely the wrong idea by the way now completely and I resisted it for such a long time so I had to kind of unlearn that that you know understand that what it means to me I also think I had to unlearn and perhaps let go is in combination of uh, that was the biggest challenge in the whole is is to let go a little bit of my own story and perhaps uh, not just write. If now I decided to write these 12 principles down that I've been, you know, sharing with many around the world, um, I was adamant, Mm. absolutely adamant, Jason, that I am not going to feature in this book. And anybody who was part of the early journey, they can they can say the editor, the publisher, because I want this this to be 12 principles. If I want to be a... A book about my journey, my life journey, my philosophies. That's a different book. I kept saying. And my development editor said, first time said, mm, that's a shame, Agnes. Mm. And I kind of took that. I trust her. And then the real shift and unlearning and bravery started, I suppose, when the publishing editor at the first four kind of the first part as a sort of in, initial review. And um, she's highly professional. This is what she does every day. And apart from some notes, she made a very personal comment at the end. She said, my favorite is principle three. And not because it's the best principle, it's because you are in it. And that really scared me, if I'm brutally honest. And I thought, ooh, maybe it's time to unlearn, reflect, 
and listen to others and perhaps let go a little bit. But then, of course, that required my my bravery and, and lots of resilience. So it became a very different journey than if we spoke in March. I, I um, signed the contract with publisher 23rd of March. If we spoke in March or February, which mm. we have actually, huh, um, I would have said it's a very different journey. And I'm grateful for the shift, the unlearning, and I'm grateful that I was able to let go, I think. Well, hopefully that's what the readers and the listeners will also think when they read it. And just just to let the uh, listeners know, I, I believe principle three was resilience, was it? Correct. Right, correct, just, correct. just to state what that is. <laughs> well, so that... that's the only one that first I let go. It's interesting. You pick up a very, very astute point here because that's the one where I kind of let go first. And then the rest started from there, really. I mean, that that in itself is a, a, a big challenge in, in writing a book. Was there maybe a bigger challenge on this this sojourn you had to to put thought to paper? The other big challenge was, of course, I, I well, you know, I mean, I'm a high performer myself, and you know me, I like I like exciting ventures, and I like to set myself challenges too. So, uh, signed the contract 23rd of March, and handed in the sort of manuscript manuscript in terms of accepted manuscript to print on the 21st, 20, sorry, 24th of July, just to be very precise. I just looked up when the manuscript meeting took place. So it's a very tight deadline. And I got the contract on my sort of name, reputation and the outline. I haven't mm -hmm. had a full manuscript. So periodically the question taught, and some people asked me actually, well, how do you know you can write a book? Well, I don't. I didn't. But where does this all this self-belief came from? You know, I, I asked myself and, and I suppose this became periodically a challenge because it's managing your managing my thought um, the, sort of in some sense. But I think the challenge was really is what not to put in the book, because I have. So many years of it, so many stories, so many wonderful leaders I came across, so much to say and inspire. And I do it with passion and love, as you know. So how do I actually, as somebody put it, it should be Agnes in a book. And A, what does that mean? And B, how do I do that in a format that is understandable for those who perhaps don't know me? So that was that that was a continuous challenge throughout this process, apart from the tight deadline. Yeah, I mean, I think one brilliant thing about books throughout the centuries is that someone can take decades and decades of knowledge and experience and wisdom and concentrate it down into a few hundred pages. And a person who has no knowledge, no basis of anything, can take all that experience all that knowledge, just if they have the patience to read through it, make notes and relate it to their life, and they can absorb all of that. And then they can apply that wisdom, that knowledge and experience that your book encapsulates, and they can actually increase their performance, in this case, their self-knowledge, their resilience, their self-awareness, and all the other principles that you speak to at a much faster rate because they will take the knowledge. Yes, it is theory but it's based on your experience but for the person reading it it's theory but then when they he or she applies it to their own life all of a sudden it becomes knowledge experience and they have a reference they have a context in which to relate uh, um, an experience or a contextual relation that allows them to have okay this is based on metrics that are, she's spoken about and that that's i just find that's why i'm so you know voracious when it comes to reading i just you know talk about this. And I, I think what you've done here is a very good thing. You've taken a couple of decades, if not more of experience and concentrated it down in a few hundred pages that anyone can pick up or listen to. Let me ask you this. I always ask authors this. Another question is like, what did you learn about yourself? I know you've spoken a little to this, but what do you feel you've learned about yourself through this process above and beyond what you've already mentioned? I think I learned, oh, a lot, but uh, definitely I learned about myself that how much I love writing, 
how much I enjoy. I knew this. Yes, I like writing. I write every day. But writing a book is a different different story. And how much I how much I love writing and how much I enjoyed writing the book. I that was sort of higher than expected, if I may, despite the tight schedule and the pressure and the expectation that is put on me. But I think the biggest learning throughout this journey is very personal. Now, if I if I may share this, and any while we read the book, we'll see that that certain people in my family, my grandparents, feature in it. Mm. And I think the biggest learning was that why my grandparents, of course, not with not with us here anymore, uh, that unwavering belief in me, what they instilled as a child has carried me through. And actually, when I was writing the last last um, um, sort of chapter or uh, principle, before the very last page, I had to stop. And I thought, where did you have this confidence from to, you know, to go in and put in that? And I really thought, you know, really nobody is self-made. I'm, I'm not a great believer of this, so I'm self-made. You know, I may have had a journey of resilience and, and uh, responsibility. Nobody is self-made. And and I think the biggest learning was that what they have gave me as a child, despite a challenging childhood with my parents, my grandparents, instilled this confidence that I, I felt even now after many, many years of professional experience. So I think, um, you know, getting back to your roots, grounded, understanding self, it certainly led to a deeper self-understanding. And what was principle 12, just for our listeners? Yeah, yeah. Principle 12 is, is leading change and transformation. So that's that's the finishing principle. But I think it was not necessarily perhaps connecting to the principle. It was more connecting to the fact that I'm writing the last principle. You mm. know, mm. Uh, the book this is finishing. It's a, it's a complex work, and and you know I have this wonderful privilege to to share my thoughts with others, and it's a huge responsibility. I mean, I see I don't see as people say to me, "Oh, Agnes, you've written a book," and I'm not quite as excited about that as 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 saying I'm being an author because I think being an author is is a very responsible. Uh, thing to do because you're sharing your thoughts somebody will read it and as you very eloquently put it earlier they may they will take action and I hope they will take action because that's the idea of a book so I learned a lot about self connection and 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 even deeper where does that resilience perhaps inside me come from but a lot of authors that I find and this may be for yourself is that part it's not so much a struggle but it awakens things in them that have been dormant for it could be years or decades and all of a sudden it comes rushing back as as they take thought and emotion and translate it into word and words obviously they're they're, they're they are trying to articulate so the reader understands where they're coming from and through that articulation of abstract thoughts into concrete words there's sometimes it's a catharsis there's a breakthrough it's almost like when i used to work with trauma as you know it was almost the same process, but obviously this is a, a much at a higher different level because you're articulating to a greater audience and trying to get across these 12 solid principles. Did you, was there, did it awaken things in you that had lain dormant? Yes, absolutely. And I'm smiling here and, and uh, perhaps maybe it can be heard from my voice as well, because uh, the, the, the two evidence, should I say, the evidence of it, and, and I think uh, sometimes a very visible format, is how a book started. Because it is truly because of that uh, process. So the book started originally with, with the fourth paragraph, and I won't read the whole, but just for the benefit of the listening, just the tone of the, it says, and I don't think it's a bad start for a leadership book, but it started, leadership is a journey to be embraced, a journey of privilege, responsibility, growth, and courage. But you don't have to make that journey alone. And this book will be your powerful companion, a must-read guide that unlocks the secret of performance advantage and how you can achieve it. And it continues. Mm. I think not a reasonable, but as I kind of 
vacant, you know, what, what, why is this performance so, I'm so passionate about it and not about achievement. And I think that also came from talking to people like, who Agnes, you're writing a book. And I was not exciting about that, but I was excited about to share, to inspire so many and what a difference it could make. And I'm so privileged to do it. So I kind of let go and, um, and as you know, but the listeners perhaps not, the book starts now in a very personal way. And if I may say a few please, words please, about it, please. it says, I was 10 years old when I decided to be a high performer. As I sat at the back of my maths class on an ordinary Friday morning, feeling unchallenged and waiting for others to finish their work, my beloved grandfather's words echoed in my mind. Don't be afraid to stand out from the crowd, but don't seek it. In that moment, I understood that conforming to other people's expectations and blending in with the majority would not provide me with the opportunities I needed to learn, grow, and reach my full potential. And I think it continues. So it became a different book. Um, not the principles. The principles remained. But sort of the personal perspective and stories waved in. And I personally think it became a different book because of that self-realization and connection throughout. And I also became braver to share a little bit. Yeah, it does take a, a you know, the vulnerability is courage. And, it, it, you know, sometimes it's, it's not easy to do, especially when you're writing to a greater audience, you know, people who may never meet you, but still they're you know, the sound of your voice on, a, on an audio book or the words written on a page will resonate in someone's cranium, right? And it will sit with them. Because I think when you read books such as yours, yes, you address, you know, performance and such. But I think where the lessons are there, but I think the real depth, the connective tissue is the author behind it. And I think when you have that connection between, you know, principles and such, as as straightforward as they may be but what it gives at least my this is my perspective so i'm just sharing my perspective i think when you have that when when someone is sharing their experiences maybe even on a personal level as you have i think it resonates so much more because as we all know the brain creates narratives around everything you know ourselves in the world and when i'm reading something you know, and I hear uh, an author telling me his or her story, or as I as I was reading your book, then I, I see myself in that place, or maybe not in that place, but I can make connections. I see connective tissue between what you're saying and what I'm relating to. And I think there's such a, again, this is my perspective, a much more deeper learning. And you actually take away things. It sits at a deeper level. At least, again, as I said, I just want to qualify. That's how I experience reading these kind of books. Yeah, well, I'm glad that I'm glad that it had that impact because it really took the biggest resilience, the biggest courage from me to to let mm -hmm. go. But I had another sort of uh, motive with that, I think, because I was adamant and I didn't know how to do it. I was adamant not to sort of, yes, you know, if you read my profile or you read your profile, we have now a lot of experience. But but nobody, nobody has started like this. And I think it's really important to understand, again, here comes the journey, and the journey is your reward. But it's really important to understand that high performance is not some sort of superiority and, and reserve for the special few. And and it's also not saying, oh, because I, I, I don't like saying because I did it, you can do it. That's not strictly also the case. But I think it's important to look at the, the journey, the challenges, the truth and the reality. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I, as, as perhaps the listeners may know or will know, um, looking at it, I grew up in rural Hungary during the communism. So that maths class perhaps is a different maths class than somewhere else, is, is where, where before going to a sort of secondary school or a gymnasium, as we say, I was told that, yes, you, you know, I was always a very good student, but, but people like us don't go there to the town. So, you know, it wasn't the environment where they, you, oh, you know all the answers half the time. Mm. Um, Agnes, how can we support you? It was the environment of 
wow, what should we do with you? I mean, you're not fitting in. So just mm. sit there. And I sat there quietly, you know, and, and that was my role. I understood it. But I think it's important for people to have that inspiration too. And and that's why I often say that the village where I'm from is called Matra Terenye. And I often say from Matra Terenye to the British Library. And that's the journey of mm. the book till then, because mm. a copy of this is in a British library. So that's the, that's the journey. And there's a lot in it. And, 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 you know, a lot of honesty, a lot of struggle, a lot of imperfections, a lot of wrong thoughts at that particular point of time. And I think I'm sharing that all the way through that I, how your belief, my belief system have changed. And, and mm -hmm. I think that's important to, to not to sensationalize success, not to sensationalize performance, because that is not my intention. So you have this big feather in your cap now you've just written a book what will be your next adventure well apart from learning dancing argentine tango which probably which probably will be i think my next adventure is is to be a responsible author who shares you notes, know, who goes on this journey and and connects with the reader or or listener as we have audiobooks as as well, and and continue to share to inspire the mission. So I don't plan to change change the way I am, the way I'm thinking, but operating wider. I also uh, would like to and will. Mm -hmm. um, interview leaders from all around the world because if you read the book there's lots in it this is not my story at all this is mm -hmm. many other leaders story in there and 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 so I'm very grateful to them as well to coming on this journey so definitely something around on YouTube on performance advantage and interviewing people on on their journey of performance and of course, continue on my mission to to making leaders, organizations, and and teams think differently, and and really operate already in so many countries in the world. And I just want to reach everybody that you know, be the best version of yourself. Maybe a cliche, but if you never define what's the best version of yourself, then it's very difficult to get there. Well said. Now, there's going to be many listeners that are interested in picking up this book. Can you give us some of the details when it's available, where it's available, how they can pick it up and such? So the book is the book is available on 25th of January in 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 Kindle in a physical format, no, paperback format, and also an Audible, but not just an Audible in terms of audio book, I should say. That's probably more correct. Um, worldwide available so you may want to look in your if i'm allowed to say company names but of course some of us amazon but noble and barnes uh, it will be on spotify apple so i made it widely available deliberately that was also a strategy not to sign an exclusive deal with audible not because i don't think it's wrong and i'm also listening to it but but i understand that many of the leaders that i work with live in different countries, different parts of the world with accessibility. So why limit? So mm -hmm. it's available even in my local bookstore here where I where I lived or walked in. So really, hopefully, easily accessible. Well, thank you very much for spending some time with me today, Agnes. I, I think it's, it was a brilliant conversation. I had uh, joy reading the book. I pulled a lot from it. And I'm sure... I, I not I'm sure I know people will pull, you know, these nuggets of experience and knowledge and make connections that will be valuable in their own private and their professional lives. So thank you for your time today. Oh, thank you very much. It is really very special to have this interview. Well, folks, that was the freshly minted new author, Agnes Chaharty. Her book, Performance Advantage, 12 Success Principles Every Senior Leader Needs to Know, But Executive Courses Don't Teach. It stands out as a vital resource for anyone eager to elevate their leadership capabilities and personal development. As Agnes said, the book will be available this January 25th, 2024, just to timestamp that. It will be available in both digital, audio, and paper formats. And you can pick that book up almost anywhere. Barnes & Nobles, Amazon, Waterstones, W.H. Smith, Indigo, and any of the other big brick-and-mortar houses. 
And from my perspective, folks, I would highly recommend, suggest you pick up a copy. It's a great read and there's so much to learn and so much to pull from it that you can apply to your own professional and private lives. I will be sure to leave all the links in the show notes as well as the contact and social media links to Agnes's profile. Well, here we are, folks, crossing the finish line of yet another episode. A fascinating episode this week, too. If you found this episode insightful and other episodes helpful in any way, please subscribe. Please share this with others. It is one of the best ways for me to spread the word of equanimity, resilience, and the ability to build well-being. Well, thank you for showing up for another week. And as I said at the top of the show, allowing me to be part of that week, of your week. And until the next time we speak, keep well, keep strong, and we'll speak soon.